Hey everyone, this is Jerry from Balance Community, uh, and today we're going to be talking about the Mighty Lock, how to use it, the fun features, do's and don'ts. Uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's jump right in and talk about what exactly the Mighty Lock is. So the Mighty Lock is a um, specifically designed line locker ring. So line lockers have been a way we've anchored slack lines since almost the beginning of the sport. Uh, but typically what has been used are just round rappel rings um, in various shapes, uh, chain links, or other such shaped metal items. Uh, and so the Mighty Lock is a more uh, specifically designed line locker ring that mates well with the flat nature of our webbings and the pin side of commonly used shackles. And so the Mighty Lock itself comes in four different colors. We got orange, black, purple, and blue. And it comes with this fun little lanyard that's great for clipping to your harness or retaining on the shackle when you're using it. And you'll notice that the Mighty Lock is not a square shape. It's instead a rectangle. And uh, there are the two different lengths of sides uh, should be used with different widths of slackline webbing, which I have here in front of me. The longer side is slightly larger than an inch and should be used with any webbings that are 21 millimeters all the way up to 26 millimeters, such as uh, standard one inch webbings or like a 22 millimeter high tech webbing. That should be used on the longer side. Anything 20 millimeters down to 17 should be used on the short side. And so <clears throat> to load the Mighty Lock, first thing you're going to want to do, I'm going to start with the one inch webbing, is form a bite. And this is Jelly Pro, uh, if you're not familiar, which is a one inch wide. And then you're going to want to orient the Mighty Lock such that the long bar is on the top and the lanyard is also on the top pointing away from your bite. And then you're gonna pass that bite through the Mighty Lock. And the loaded strand, the walking strand, is on the top. And then you're gonna go down and then back up through the same direction. And now we're gonna grab a connector. And so the type of connector you use depends on the width of webbing that you are, going, are anchoring. So we have a one inch wide webbing here. And so we're gonna to wanna to choose a shackle that has a jaw width of, of roughly one inch, no smaller than one inch, and preferably not larger than say 28 millimeters. And the reason for that is if we're gonna be using the, bow, the, the, the pin side of that shackle, we want it, the webbing to have, to use the lobes of the shackle as a guide to stay on top of one another and we want the, the lobes of the shackle to contact the square corners of the Mighty Lock when it's under load. And so in order to do that, you wanna match the width of the jaw to the webbing size. So this is a stainless steel BC shackle, which mates well with one inch webbing in the Mighty Lock. And so you're gonna to wanna to put the, the lanyard first through the lobe of the shackle and then Pass the pin through that bite of webbing that you pass through twice. Tighten down your pin. Make sure everything's sitting nice. Give a tug on both strands. And there we go. The Mighty Lock is loaded. And so as you can see, our loaded strand, which is this one, is going on the outside of the device all the way around. Loading this strand instead is not okay. In some webbings, this orientation can break as low as 50% of the MBS of the webbing. And a lot of webbings slip very at very low tensions. And so it's best to keep your load strand on the outside and it's directly in contact with that top bar. And so once your webbing is in, it's very good practice to do a tail tie off on any webbing anchor that you do. And the reason for that is not to stop slippage or prevent any sort of weird failures. It's instead to keep your rig tidy and to guard against accidentally pulling on this tail, which can cause the Mighty Lock to 
orient itself in a weird way and cause premature failure. And so the best tail tie off that I like to do is a barrel knot. And so I just form a bite in the tail about say a meter from the end, pass it up through the shackle, just like that. And then do a double fisherman's. So this knot should not see any load. So we don't really need to, to make it a releasable knot. You can if you want, but it's unnecessary. And so you're gonna to wanna to do a double fisherman's on itself here, just like that. And then pull on both tails like that, and cinch it up. And there we go. So now if this tail accidentally gets pulled on, you're only gonna be loading this barrel knot rather than loading the mighty lock itself. Cause you have this nice little loop of slack that will remain in the system no matter what happens to your rig. And that should be done with any width of webbing, which we will discuss here in a minute. So another important thing when rigging the Mighty Lock is to ensure that the Mighty Lock is sitting well on the shackle lobes, especially when it's on the, boat, the pin side. So you want to make sure the Mighty Lock has these four square corners. You want to make sure those two of those corners are in contact with the lobes of the shackle. As you can see here, one there and one there. You don't want it crooked like that or really any other way than as you can see there. So I should also mention that you can use the bow side of a shackle with the Mighty Lock which is a little less restrictive. Any of these shackles here before me will work with any of these widths in this orientation. It's actually a lot more friendly <coughs> to use this orientation in general, but oftentimes the rest of our rigging calls for the bow to be on this side, because maybe there's a tri-load happening or there's multiple directions of, of load being acquired, like being applied to the shackle. And so this is a, in general, the most used method, but it can be used in the other way. All right, so moving on, let's check out some other widths of webbing. Now we have a 20 mil, this is Spider Silk Mark V. And so with a 20 mil down to 17 millimeter, you should be using the shorter side of the Mighty Lock. And so same thing, form a bite, walking strand on the end, Short bar on the top, lanyard pointing away from the bite, pass the bite through, down, and back through in the same direction. And now with a 20 mil webbing, on the pin side, this shackle will not work. Instead, we want to use a shackle with a smaller jaw. And the Van Beast half inch or two ton green pin shackle has a 22 millimeter jaw width, which mates perfectly with say 19 to 22 millimeter webbings. They're 20 to 22. So same thing here, we want to line everything up, put our shackle in, there we go. So sometimes with these bigger lobe shackles, the lanyard will be a little too short. And I will say that the lanyard is not a safety critical thing. It is there to prevent dropping the mighty lock. So if it's getting in the way and you can't find a good way to get it on there, you can leave it off completely. No big deal. So there we go. There's a 20 mil webbing installed. Again, the load strand is on the outside, tail is underneath. And we're going to want to do a tail tie off there, which I won't do now for time reasons. And again, you want to check the orientation before you load. Make sure two of those squares are in contact with the lobes and it's relatively straight. Just like that. Moving on, let's try an even narrower webbing. Here I have a 17 millimeter slack spec tubular. 
I know there's some other 17 mil webbings out there, uh, like there's a few high techs and uh, maybe a few low techs as well. But 17 mil, same same with the 20. Small bar on top, lanyard pointing away, form a bite, pass it through, down and back through the same direction. And with this small of webbing, up to say 19 millimeters, you're going to want to use an even smaller shackle. The 716 Van Beast or a 1.5 ton green pin has a 19 mil width jaw, which is perfect for 17 to 19 mil webbings. Same thing. There we go. All the same precautions, no matter the width or shackle you're using. Two lobes in contact with the squares. Orientation good. And we're gonna to wanna to do a tail tie off, but I won't, again, for speed reasons. Um, yeah, that's the typical installation. And so one orientation that I get a lot of questions about is on a segmented line. If you have, say, a T-loop or a DLV in the middle or somewhere on your line, and you want to attach a backup to it, a lot of folks have asked me is if you can use a Mighty Lock with, say, a Quick Link or even a Soft Shackle, Grog Splice or anything like that, to go to your T-loop or DLV, and then this is your backup and you're pulling on it this way. That is not a good orientation. We've done several tests with this sort of pull on webbings and you can get down to as low as 50% of the MBS of the webbing when it's loaded like this. And so we do not recommend that orientation no matter what type of connector you use there. The only approved um, loading of the Mighty Lock is load strand on the outside. And that'll work with every webbing that you want to use. So that pretty much covers the usage of the Mighty Lock. If you have any questions, please reach out. We're available via email, phone, text, Facebook, Instagram. Really any way you want to get in contact, please ask your questions to us. We will do our best to answer. Thank you for watching.